Luke 17, beginning at verse number 11. If you have it, respond by saying, I got it. All right, Luke 17, beginning at verse number 11. It says, and it came to pass, I'm reading out of the King James Version. As he went to Jerusalem, he's on his way to Jerusalem. What is going to be his last time? That he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And we know why they were standing afar off, because they were lepers. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They didn't go up to him like the other man did in Matthew chapter 8. They stood afar off and said, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, mm -hmm. they were cleansed. Yeah. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God yes. and fell down on his face at his feet, at his feet being Jesus, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Yeah. And Jesus answering said, were there not ten cleansed? That, 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 that baffles me because Jesus didn't see that they were cleansed. Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he calls him a stranger because, of course, he's Samaritan. And he said unto him, arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee Whole. Did you catch that? Yeah, yeah, Nine yeah. of them were cleansed, but one of them was made whole. This morning I want to talk about don't forget to say thank you. Look at somebody and say, don't forget to say thank you. Look at somebody and say, don't forget to say thank you. Amen. Let us bow. God, I thank you for this opportunity. Uh, thank you, God, for this opportunity. Don't let this opportunity be wasted. Uh, I stand, God, uh, in need of your presence, in need of your power. Overlook my shortcomings. Uh, see beyond my faults and see the needs of your people. Use me as your instrument today. Uh, not because I've been good, but because that you recognize your people need the word today. Help me to speak with clarity and bring the understanding. Reveal, re bring back to my remembrance what you have revealed. Use me today, God, in such a way that I myself and these people would know that you are speaking through me to them. I pray now, God, that you would help me. I pray for your people. Open up their minds, God. Open up their ears that they would hear. Open up their minds that they would understand. Open their hearts, God, that they would receive your word. I pray, God, that you would move on the inside by your spirit. As the word goes forth, oh God, bring clarity, bring understanding. All those many things that your word is designed to do. Remember my prayers, oh God, and hear us today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. Don't forget to say thank you. Amen. Luke, one of my favorite books in the Bible is Luke, the Gospel of Luke. The reason for that is, is that Luke is very thorough in his presentation of the life and ministry of Jesus. And even though Luke was not a disciple who walked with Jesus, yeah. he presents a very, very accurate um, description of the life and the ministry of Jesus. What you have in the Gospels is a historical presentation of the life and of Jesus, how he actually walked. They are actual historical yeah, yeah. events, and Luke gathers a lot of them. I like that he's very thorough in understanding the life and ministry of Jesus. And I wish us as in 2022 were a little bit more thorough and getting the right information to yeah. understand our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I like that he's thorough. He takes the time, he goes to extra lengths to get all the facts straight. 
about our Lord and our Savior. One of the things I like about Luke is that Luke presents Jesus as the ideal Savior. He presents Jesus as the Savior of all mankind. And I like that because what distinguishes our Savior from Elijah Muhammad, what distinguishes our Savior from Buddha and Confucius, is that our salvation is to him that will believe. In other words, you don't have to work your way into salvation. You believe your way into salvation. For any person that can believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, you are able to be saved. And that's what distinguishes us. For the other religions, you have to work your way to be saved. If you don't do it this way, you won't be saved. If you don't do it that way, you won't be saved. But us as a Christian, we believe that, that all you have to do is believe that God raised Jesus from the dead and and you will be saved. I also like that it presents Jesus as the ideal universal savior. In other words, it means that you can't be prejudiced with who and who is not saved. You can't say if you black, you'll be saved. You can't say if you Mexican, you'll be saved. You can't put a prejudice on white people can't yeah, yeah. Uh, get to my Jesus or Asian people can't get. I like that he's savior of all mankind. That whether you black, white, blue, green, or yeah. Orange, if you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, and I don't know about you, but I like that. I like that because you know you can subjectively say there are some people that you don't like that you probably would have kept them out of the kingdom, and that's not why I praise God. I praise God because there's some people that don't like me that would have kept me out of the kingdom. Uh, but you can't be prejudiced with with my Lord and Savior. And I I like that that, that Luke presents Jesus as Savior of all. All mankind, and if you can believe, if you can have faith in God, that God will move in your life. I like that. If you believe that God can do it, it don't matter what color you are, it don't matter how much money you have, it all matters on whether or not you can believe in God. And I like that because. If it was by how smart you were, maybe I wouldn't get the revelation. Now, I think I'm a little sharp, but, but if it was based on intellect, maybe I wouldn't get the revelation. If it was based on fame and popularity, maybe I wouldn't get the revelation. He makes it even for everybody, no matter how much money you have, uh, no matter how smart you are, no matter how many friends you have, no matter the social status, no matter the, 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 the neighborhood you live in, if you have faith, in God, God can move in your life. And that's a blessing for me. That's a blessing for me because sometimes the people move in their own neighborhood and they put gates around so that people like me and you can't get into their neighborhoods. But I like the fact, I like the fact that Jesus is universal and all I got to do is just believe that my bank account may not be as big, but if I can believe, I can see a move of God. And I like that. I like that. The move of God, the Christian movement, it breaks down all prejudice, it breaks down all tradition and religion, and it unifies us to one fact, the, the determining factor, and that is, if you can believe that God raised Jesus from the yeah. dead, you can be saved. It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from, if you believe God can change and transform your life. And I like that. I like that, that I can be broke and believe God and God will move me from being broke to having a little bit of something. I can be sad and believe God and God can move me from being sad to being joyous and it has nothing to do with who like me or who don't like me or where I grew up at or what color my skin is but if I can believe in the almighty universal savior that God can do something in my life and I like that because you can't stop it. I like that because you can't stop what God is going to do in my life, whether you like me or not, it ain't based on how people feel about me. It's based on whether or not I can believe oh, in God. I can really preach on that. But I like that it's based on faith. And the faith then becomes the backdrop or the premise of the story. It is a story of faith. And this is what I like about the story because what the story shows is that your faith, I want you to get this, uh, Jesus just gives them instructions. It shows that faith is seen through obedience. I want you to hear that. That faith 
is seen through obedience. That whether or not you are going to put your faith in action, that faith is seen through obedience. I want you to hear me. If you really believe it, you would change your behavior in pursuit of it. If I was to go across the street and I said for the first person that came across the street, not for the first, but for every person that came across the street, I will give you a million dollars if you believe, Marcus, you would make your way, come on, across the street and get whatever it is that I want to give. But if you don't believe it, you're going to sit across the street and look at me and say, I believe, I heard what you said, but not enough for me to get up and change. I want somebody to hear me. And oftentimes we say we believe God, but, but the reality is if you really believed him, you would get up and I wish I had somebody. Your, your actions would show that you really trust God. And, and most of us, we do it. And Marcus going across the street and say he got a million dollars. That so and so ain't got no money. I ain't going no cross no street. Uh, and if you really believed it, though, you would get up and you would change some things about your behavior in pursuit of it. And, and here's God. He's saying, oh, I can change your life, but, but you got to change your direction. And I can transform your life, but you got to transform your mindset. And, and if you really had faith in God, it would show because you would change your behavior. If you really had faith in God, God, you would show it by action. That's what Paul said, that faith without works is dead. And if you really believe in God, it would show in how much you obey him. I like that. I like that, that, that it shows, it shows that faith is seen through obedience. Show me your faith in God, not by your words, but by your behavior. If Jesus doesn't say they will be healed. He just tells them to go. Now, it's dependent on whether or not they can believe enough what Jesus says to just move on his actions. And that's tough for me. That's tough for me. That's, that's tough when I, when I hear stuff that, that, that God says and now it becomes my choice or decision to show my faith in my actions when he says vengeance is mine saith the Lord and I will repay. Now that is the instruction with promise but now it becomes a choice for Marcus to believe God enough not to get my revenge on somebody. Are y'all walking with me this morning or am I just uh, talking this by myself? It becomes my level of faith to say, I believe God to get his vengeance so I'm not going to exact mine. Are you walking with me? And Jesus gives them instruction and now it becomes their choice either to believe what he has said or to stay where they are. And, and I, I believe that's a word for some of us in here because some Sometimes God, he gives us a set of instructions and you're waiting for God to open up something for you in your life when God is waiting for you to simply follow the uh, instructions. I, I talk to a whole lot of people that don't get relationships and, and then when I go down the line and I ask them certain questions, it becomes evident that the reason why your judgment is cluttered is because you didn't follow, I wish I had somebody the instructions, and if you had followed the instructions your decision would be clear, but your mind is cluttered because you step outside of the instructions, but you want God to, are y'all walking with me this morning, but, but you want God to give you the blessing, uh, I want you to hear me that sometimes God fixes it so the promise is wrapped in walking the and that's an ouch and a man. Sometimes the promise of God is wrapped in a principle of God. Here how it goes that you give and it shall be given back to you. Now that's the principle. Now here's the promise. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. Now here's the requirement. Uh, shall be given to your bosom with the same measure. Uh, Y'all walk with me this morning. I got a praying church and I want you to understand that he fixes it so that the promise is wrapped in the principle. And if you follow the principle, the principle will lead you into the promise. But most of us as Christians, we don't understand. 
understand principle. We understand miracle. And we live our lives outside of the principle and expect God to give us a miracle. And God says, I'm not going to give you a miracle. I need you to walk the principle. And if you walk the principle, you will see the promise is in. I wish I had somebody. In. And this is my word for you this morning. My word for you uh, before we get to, don't forget, uh, before we get there, I want you to understand um, that it's wrapped in the doing. I wish somebody to hear me. It is the walking of the principle that brings the promise of God. And I know the preachers tell you if you say Jesus three times, if you clap your hands when I say on the third day, I know they tell you that, but in reality, there are some blessings that you will never get if you don't learn to walk the principle. There are some blessings that will never meet you because you don't understand. You got to discipline yourself to walk the principle. Uh, I want you to hear me that uh, it's walking the uh, walking the the principle. This is is walking the principle as they went. They were cleansed. Did y'all read that? Because I read the same thing. It said as they went. They were cleansed as they did what God told them to do. The blessing came. I believe that's a word for some of us up in here. Because I remember a time that I was asking God to rid me of my asthma. I had asthma attacks and I couldn't breathe. And, and every time I would pray that prayer, it seemed like God answered every other prayer in my life but that one. And, and it was amazing to me how the God that I serve can be selective with what he chose. Are you walk with me what he chose and chose not to answer until I discovered that one of the things that was causing my asthma attack yeah. was me smoking cigarettes and, and, and it was not until I learned that I had to put the cigarettes down so that God's healing could manifest uh, in my life and, and that, that sounds like a whole bunch of us I, I had to discipline myself to walk the principle and the power of God became available to me once I walked the principle and, and this is what he said as they went they were healed and, and as they went they were healed and as you obey God he, he brings it together as you do what God told you to do he, he sends the miracle to your house and, and I want you to understand something this morning that uh, I'm not telling you about the God of miracles but I'm talking to you about the God of principle and if you just learn to walk the principle you will have less need for a miracle. You would see the power of God manifest in your life when you are disciplined enough to walk the principle. And if you walk the principle, I want somebody to hear me that uh, you praying for God to bless your money and that's the only prayer he not answering is because it's not about miracle. He not going to send a check to your house, but you got to learn principle. And that is manage all the resources that God has blessed you with. And, and if you do the principle, I wish I had somebody as they went. What if I told you that as you discipline your spending, you'll accumulate wealth? Right? What if I told you that if you eat the right stuff, that God will bring your house, your health back to you? Once you walk the principle, you'll see the power of the Almighty. I know that ain't popular, but uh, as they went, they were healed. And as you do what God told you to do, your blessing is going to come. As you live the way God told you to live, your miracle will take place. As you transform your actions, God will transform your life. Uh, but if you stay where you are, you will never see your blessing manifest itself. And uh, as they went, uh, as you pray, the answer will come. As you, as you seek after God, the miracle will take place as, as you, I wish somebody would hear me this morning, as you walk the principle, the power will flow as they went. 
They were healed. He doesn't just heal them in the instant that they asked. And, and I want to minister to you in here this morning. And my church would be packed if I was telling people, all you got to do to get rich is to pay uh, $20 in tithes or $1,000 in tithes or, or $500 in tithes. It would be packed if I was selling get rich schemes. And it would be packed if I was telling people all you had to do was show up and God was going to bless your life. But, uh, but I want somebody to hear me this morning. And sometimes God... He don't give you all of what you ask immediately, but he takes you step by step. And, and as you go, I'm going to go. And as you make the step, then I, I want somebody to hear me that God is waiting on you to walk the principle. And then you'll see his power begin to flow uh, as you go. It will come as you follow the instructions. The blessing will come. I want you to hear me that God sometimes works in steps and steps. Ages and God has already mapped out the steps of a good man. Y'all know that scripture. The steps of a good man, here it goes, are ordered by the Lord. And you are at step one. And God says, well, I'm going to give him a part of his blessing at step three. So you got to get to step three. And the rest of that blessing comes at step five. So you got to get to step oh, Y'all walking with me. And now I'm going to give him something new at step 11. But, but most of us, we quote the scripture, but we don't stay within the steps and you wondering why your miracle haven't came it's because you have got out of alignment with the I uh, hope you walk with me this morning and it's God as they went as they went and here's another part that I like uh, an, an example of how blessings can cause you to forget to be thankful it's one of those sermons that I want to hoop on but I may not get to it I may not uh, I like that that it, it shows that sometimes that God is the only God I know that can bless you with stuff that's so amazing it'll make you forget who gave it to you and, and sometimes blessings will cause you to forget to be thankful notice this master have mercy on us versus where are the nine master have mercy on us and that everybody is crying out to God for the same healing but but the response is when God gives it oh God are different that, that everybody come to church waiting on a miracle everybody come to church waiting on the promise but but what happens I don't want to talk to you that's praying like me that's still struggling like me I want, but what if God did bless you with the million would you would you stop coming to church like you and see sometimes you can tell how a person really feels once you give them what they asked you for they, they'll be nice to you as long I wish I had somebody can I, can I borrow twenty dollars and they got their attitude right because they need something from you but oh but sometimes you know what I love to do I love to test the heart and intention of a person and you want $20 I'm going to give you the 20 now I'm going to see how you handle me tomorrow and will you be as nice as you was uh, I wish I had somebody and, and this is how we do God he is your Lord and Savior as long as you need something from him he is your master as long as you need a husband and as as long as you need some money, he is your Lord and Savior. But but I look at the house today and I gotta ask the question where I wish I had somebody or the nine. It's, it's just showing you that when God bless some of you, you don't pray as hard as you pray when God opened the door. You you don't worship as intensely as you did when God gives you her. I wish I had some real people in here that when he does open up the window of heaven and, and he pours you out the blessing that that you don't have room enough to receive it. It makes you lazy. It makes you. It makes you slothful. It, it makes you ungrateful to God. And uh, notice that He says, "Have mercy on us." And where was the mercy? The people that needed mercy after uh, the healing came. And, and if I could just ask every, everyone in the house today that uh, maybe your prayer life was different before you got that financial blessing. Maybe your actions was different before you got the husband or the wife. Maybe before when you was asking God for it, your, uh, uh, your dedication was at one place, but since God has blessed you now, I wish
wish I had some real people. I, I want to ask you the question, where are the nine in your life? I, I don't know who not here. I don't care who not here. But for those of you who are here, where are the nine uh, in your life? When God did open up the door, uh, God, how did your praise change? When, when God did bless you with it, how uh, did your commitment change? When God did open the door, and I'm a firm believer that sometimes what God will do is he'll bless you with it so that he can see uh, who you really are. He'll expose you by giving you exactly what you asked for. And then there comes a time in your life where whether they're not 10 cleans, didn't you ask me for what I just gave you? And now that I gave it to you, I haven't seen you at church in weeks. I, I haven't heard a prayer from you in months. You, you ain't picked up your Bible in years. Where are the nine uh, in your life? I like that. He says, where are the nine? Where where are the nine? I, you needed me and you was crying out to me, but now that you got the blessing, where are the nine? It begs the question of motives. Are you saying what you saying because you need God to do something for you? Is, is God just your master when you need a blessing from him? But uh, Will it change your prayer life? Will it change your commitment if God was to open every door that you ask him? And I believe that God sometimes don't because some of us can't handle being blessed. Some of us can't handle the money that we asking God for. He already know you're going to start being stingy. You're going to start being selfish. You're going to start being mean to people. And God is saying, I want to bless you, but but your attitude ain't ready to be blessed. Your, your maturity level ain't ready for what I want to give you. And, and he says to him, he says, where 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 are the nine? Where where are the nine? And I like that. I like that because it's, it, it causes everybody to question their own motive. And I don't know about you, but I decided this, that when I didn't have a car, I praised God a certain way. But but when he gave me a car, I, I turned it up just a little bit. And when I didn't have one thing that I asked God for, when he blessed me with it, I made sure to say thank you every time uh, that I used. And when people, they talk about markers, it don't take all that. Uh, I know it don't take all that for you, but if you saw what God brought me from, I, I'm not going to just forget about him once I get to what I've been asking him for. But you better buckle up your seats because I'm going to give God the craziest praise. David danced out of his clothes and McCall was looking at him like he was crazy. That's because she had lived in a palace all her life. Her daddy was the king, so she didn't know what it was like to be a shepherd, but David, who had seen some dry days, who, who had to be out in the dirt and in the mud taking care of sheep, he understood what it was like to be at the bottom, and when God raised him up, he said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, that if God really does something for you, you, you are not act like you didn't had it together your whole life, but, but if God brought you from nothing, and, and now you got a little something, you ought to praise him like you done lost your ever loving mind cause I remember when I had to eat noodles and sausage and now I can eat chicken I got an extra praise on it now now I can eat some filet I, I got an extra praise on it now I wish I had somebody I'm gonna I'm give God my everything for what he done uh, in my life and I don't know about you but some of you you, you forget about the giver because you so caught up on the gift and I had to tell somebody oh uh, yeah while you praising God for that you don't recognize uh, now let me minute, let me mark, mark and that right quick I'm watching my time uh, sometimes what we do is we forget we forget see when you give people what they really want they'll show you why they walk with you if, if you're asking me for a watch and I give you a watch and your attitude change the only thing that that says to me is I'm not giving him nothing else cause I see how you go acting and this is God he said alright you ask me for it I'm a bless you with it, but, but your attitude showed me that you worshiping the gift more uh, than the gift giver. And, and some of you this morning come to church after Thanksgiving, uh, and you praising God and you thanking God, uh, but, but and you got the right attitude. But, but I want to minister to somebody who, who got a car, somebody who just got a new man, who just got a new 
new woman. Somebody who got a brand new TV for Black Friday. And, and instead of coming to church on Sunday, you, you sitting at home watching your car, watching your TV. Like God didn't bless you with the money to get it. Uh, but my word for you this morning is with all your getting, don't forget to say, uh, thank you. And if you get off the gift, you'll recognize that the one who gave you the gift uh, is able to give you more gifts. Uh, that's why I can't get caught up on one. I, I thank you for one, God, but now I'm seeking you because you're the one uh, that's going to give me another one. And I'm seeking you for, for another. I wish I had somebody that, uh, that understands you can't uh, come to church acting like God ain't never done nothing for you, but wherever you are, if you can't make it to church, you just ought to send up a thank you, Jesus, right right where you are. Thank you, Jesus, uh, for blessing me the way you bless me. Thank you, Jesus, for opening the doors that you open for me. Thank you, God for doing what you did in my life. I, I couldn't make it to church, but I'm going to send you a thank you from my job. I'm going to send you. I wish somebody would just tell God, uh, thank you, Lord, for blessing me uh, when I didn't even deserve uh, what you gave me in the first place. He says there, there were 10 of you cleansed, but where, oh God, where, where are the nine? Where, where are the nine? I love it. I love it because it shows us uh, this morning. It shows um, that that God sometimes He has to He has to make you uh, develop an attitude of gratitude. And, and somebody said this to me. They said you don't miss the water until your well run dry. I'm watching my time, but but there were times in my life that I had a good girlfriend, and and, and I wasn't too good to my good girlfriend. And and an old lady told me this one time. She said, Marcus, you not gonna miss your water until your well run. And dry and, and sure enough, I tell you, I cheated on it. And I, she came back and I cheated on her again, and I and I cheated on her again. I had too many baby mamas, and, and she left me and just left me high and dry. And I didn't realize how good of a woman she was. I wish I had somebody, and this is God that God He'll bless your life like you ain't never thought to be blessed. He'll give you more than you can ask for, and you, and you still got an attitude because He ain't blessed you with more money. You still got an attitude because you ain't got a better car, and God sometimes he'll allow lack to hit your life to show you that you ain't gonna miss your water until your well run dry and then you will learn how to say thank you what you going out for a while and then when God start to bless you you'll remember uh, to say thank you what you going out it for a little bit that's why you gotta struggle sometimes so you don't forget that God is the one uh, who is blessing your life and, and when you got to go without whenever he send it uh, you'll be willing to thank God for it I, I didn't appreciate the car I had until I didn't have a car and then God blessed me with a little small Chevy Cobalt and every time I started that put put up I said uh, thank you Jesus for little red thank you Jesus for my little hulu thank you Jesus I don't care what you bless me with I'm just appreciative uh, that I got one and, and if you just have an attitude like me this morning to uh, just take a second to say thank you Lord and I don't have the biggest house but thank you Lord I don't have the most expensive car but thank you Lord I'm not wearing Louis Vuitton but thank you Lord I ain't got Gucci shoes or red bottoms but I still uh, got a praise uh, on the inside come on give God a hand of praise don't forget uh, to say the doors of our church 